Elizabeth Ann Bailey Seton was the first person born in the United States to be declared a saint. She opened the first American Catholic parish school and established the first American Catholic orphanage. She founded the first Native American religious community of women. All this she did in a span of 46 years while raising her five children. Elizabeth is a true daughter of the American Revolution, born August 28, 1774 in New York City, just two years before the Declaration of Independence. She was the daughter of Dr. Richard Bailey, an eminent physician and professor of what is now Columbia University. Brought up as an Episcopalian, she received an excellent education, and from her early years, she manifested an unusual concern for the poor. The early death of her mother in 1777 and her baby sister in 1778 gave Elizabeth a feel for eternity and the temporariness of the pilgrim life on earth. Elizabeth's parents handed on to her their own faith. Her mother and stepmother taught her to pray and read scripture. Her father taught her to love and serve the poor. As a young girl, Elizabeth took food to the poor near her home. After she was married, she and her sister-in-law, Rebecca, visited the poor and sick in slums. Elizabeth was prepared for New York high society. At the age of 19, she married William Seton, the son and business partner of the owner of a wealthy shipping firm. No one could have guessed the plans God had for her. Will and Elizabeth were devoted to each other. They loved their five children, three girls and two boys. Everything went well until 1803 when Will Seton's business went bankrupt and his health failed. The Felici family in Laverno, Italy invited Will Elizabeth and their oldest daughter Anne to visit so that Will could recuperate in the warm, sunny Italian climate. The journey was rough because there had been an epidemic in New York before the Seatons left. When they landed in Italy, the police quarantined them in an old fort. If after six weeks they did not come down with the disease, they would be able to enter Italy. Will, already ill, had to lie in a cold, damp room. Elizabeth cared for him as well as she could, but a few weeks after they were freed, Will died of tuberculosis. The Felicis, who were Catholic, helped Elizabeth, now 30 years old. She soon realized that God was calling her to become a Catholic. She went to a priest to learn about the truths of the faith. Later, she and her children became Catholics based on three points. The belief in the real presence, devotion to the Blessed Mother, and conviction that the Catholic Church led back to the Apostles and to Christ. She met with stern opposition from her Episcopalian friends, but was received into full communion with the Catholic Church on March 4, 1805. Abandoned by her friends and relatives, Elizabeth was invited by the superior of the Sulpicians in Baltimore to found a school for girls in that city. The school prospered and eventually the Sulpician Superior, with the approval of Bishop Carroll, gave Elizabeth and her assistants a rule of life. They were also permitted to make religious profession and to wear a religious habit. In 1809, Elizabeth moved her young community to Emmitsburg, Maryland, where she adopted as a rule of life an adaptation of the rule observed by the Sisters of Charity founded by St. Vincent de Paul although she did not neglect the ministry of the poor. She actually laid the foundation for what became the American parochial school system. She trained teachers and prepared textbooks for use in the schools. She also opened orphanages in Philadelphia and New York City. She and other women began a community of religious women known as the Sisters of Charity of St. Joseph's. Elizabeth Seton received the title of mother, head of the community. They followed an adapted version of the rule used by the Daughters of Charity founded in 1633 in France. She died at Emmitsburg on January 4, 1821, was beatified by Pope St. John XXIII in 1963, and was canonized by St. Paul VI in 1975. After Mother Seton's death, 
her community grew into several independent new congregations of Sisters of Charity in the U.S. and Canada. In 1850, the remaining Sisters of Charity of St. Joseph's joined the Daughters of Charity of St. Vincent de Paul of Paris, France. Elizabeth's two sons entered the Navy. Her daughter, Anna, became a nun, but died at an early age, as did Rebecca. Her daughter, Catherine, became a Sister of Mercy and worked with those in prison. Elizabeth Seton told her sisters, The first end I propose in our daily work is to do the will of God, secondly, to do it in the manner He wills it, and thirdly, to do it because it is His will. Today, thousands of Daughters of Charity carry on Mother Seton's work. They serve in hospitals, nursing homes, and schools. <laughs>